Good morning, everyone. It's good to see all of you on this Palm Sunday. We are, are celebrating Jesus' entry into Jerusalem as we begin Holy Week 2022. It doesn't seem possible that we're already at that point, but, but we are. And it's a good, good, beautiful day in Princeton, Illinois, to be able to start that off. We welcome everyone here in the sanctuary, um, and we welcome those who are watching at home as well. We're glad that you're joining us for our celebration of the Lord's Day today. We will start off with a few announcements. So today we have our last youth group before, because, uh, well, we aren't going to be meeting on Easter, so youth group is um, tonight. It is all fun and games tonight, so hopefully... People will want to come tonight, um, 6 o'clock, and we'll have some food and some games tonight. Then tomorrow, we are postponing the adult ministries meeting. So just to let you know, there is no adult ministries meeting tomorrow at 4, but we do have the hour table meal, which is for anyone who wants to come and, and have a free meal and some fellowship from 5 to 6 um, tomorrow in Cushing Hall. And then on Tuesday, we have administrative board at 7 o'clock. And the Lenten study, our last Lenten study, is at 6.30 on Wednesday. Of course, we have all the other regular things um, going on. And then I'll get to our Holy Week services in just a moment. I do want to say thank you to Liz Anderson for, for um, the palm decorations. She got them in and arranged them today. So we are very thankful to Liz for that. And I am going to ask um, Maggie, if you don't mind, at the very end, if you would come up during the la after the song is done, get a couple of palms. And if anyone wants to take a palm leaf home with them um, after the service, you can certainly take one home with you. Change the World for April is going to be, all the funds are donated to the CAMP project, which is the Central America Mission Project, and we're very grateful to have the Whitlocks here this morning. Um, Dan is going to be sharing a little bit during a mission moment on, the, on what the organization is. We continue to, to um, also collect money for the Ukraine situation to help all those who are being affected by that. Um, UMCOR is the United Methodist Committee on Relief and all of the funds, 100% um, go toward the relief efforts. Then, let's see, let me turn the page. Uh, we have the Red Cross Blood Drive coming up here in Cushing Hall on April 21st, so be sure to sign up online if you would like to give blood. And now I'll get into our Holy Week schedule. So, on Monday, Thursday, and everyone is invited to every single one of these services, on Monday, Thursday, um, which is April 14th, at 7 o'clock, we will be having our observance of Jesus' last meal with the disciples. Holy Communion will be served, and this is my favorite service, actually, of the entire year because of the candles that are lit. At the beginning of the service, we'll have kids lighting the disciple candles, and then at the very end of the service, after communion, we will have the sanctuary become dark, and we will extinguish extinguish the candles one by one in a visual interpretation of what happened on that very special day so many years ago. Our Good Friday service is a short half an hour one at noon um, on, on Friday here in the sanctuary. This is when, of course, Jesus was crucified on the cross. And then the, the sanctuary will remain open from 1230 to 3 o'clock. Anytime you'd like to come in for five minutes or for an hour, you're welcome to come and be um, in prayer and meditation. There'll be soft music, but at the end of, at three o'clock, the Jesus candle will be extinguished. Then on Holy Saturday, we will be having our 5.30 service. Um, so from 5.30 to 6.15, we will have a children's message. And it's just, Holy Saturday is an awkward time but it's, it's an interesting time to be able to think about what Jesus did for us. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll have the 6.30 sunrise service. Um, it's only a half an hour, so you're welcome to come to that, maybe before you're traveling um, to other places. I had really thought, oh, maybe because it, Easter is late this year, we'd be able to have it outside. It's going to be 45 degrees and rainy, so we're having it inside. So 
but luckily, Charlie's able to play for us, so that works out really well. So everybody's welcome to come at 6.30 on Sunday. We'll have a very light continental breakfast, just some coffee cakes, some fruit, and coffee and, and orange juice and things like that for anyone who'd like to have that. Um, and then our regular service is at 9 o'clock. Um, next Sunday. So hopefully that will be a, a wonderful time of being able to remember what Jesus did for us all of this next week. And just two other quick, quick announcements. Remember that the Culver's um, Share Night is returning on Tuesday, April 26th from 5 to 8 p.m. Our United Women in Faith will be at Culver's and proceeds will go towards their ministry. And then the evening of craft making um, that Joyce is leading, that's on Saturday, April 30th. And we need to know in the next about week um, whether you're coming. So sign up with Joyce or on the on the. Uh, the sheet outside the main office. Lots of stuff going on. <laughs> so we are grateful that we have an active church and that we get to do these wonderful things for our God and for our community. If you'll please now bow your heads with me for our focusing prayer. Glory and praise be to you, O God. Hosanna in the highest. We remember the daring courage of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who boldly entered into the gathering clouds of doom. Yet by his resurrection, you showed him to be the Lord of all. We ask that his strong dedication be with us as we worship today and as we go forward into the world, that we might follow your ways and in doing so, accomplish your will for our lives. It is through Christ that we pray. Amen. And today we have some special music to enter into Holy Week. Um, Paul Kautz is going to be playing the trumpet and Charlie is on the organ. This is a very traditional song for this Palm Sunday because it's entitled The Palms.
very stately, very stately. About ran out of gas, but you know what? You still made it. We made it to Jerusalem, so thank you very much. So if you are able, if you'll please stand as we have our call to worship as led by Shelley. Cheering crowds sang their praises as Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem to fulfill the ancient prophecy. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Waving palm branches and with their clothes cast on the road to make a pathway, the people sang their joyous acclamation. Ride on, King Jesus, cried through the crowds. Ride on to anguish. Ride on to betrayal. Ride on to the cross. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And if you are able, we will stand for our opening hymn. Now, at this time, I would like any of the kids, I know we've only got a couple here today, but if you want to come up, you can't come by the front steps. As you can see, it's a little different today. But if you want to come up, we are, I will give you your palm leaves, and we'll just have a little parade right up here, okay? As we sing Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, number 278. So come on up either, either side. You may be seated, and now if you just want to, what we're going to do is we're going to sit at the side of the, 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 the chancel, okay? If you can't, we'll just come and sit down here, okay? Okay. Can I, if, do you want, you can stand if you want, that's fine too. It's okay, it's okay, she's right down there. Can you just come over here for just a little bit? I won't take too much time, it's okay. Oh, is it okay? Yeah, Mom, if you want to come up, that's totally fine. So, okay. So, do you notice anything different today? Is there anything different from what we normally have today? Do you notice anything different today? Zoe, is there anything different out here either that you have or anything that's missing? The stairs are missing. You're right. When you guys normally come up, what do you normally come up? The stairs. the stairs. Exactly. Do you think they just got stolen this week? No? Hannah, do you have any idea what happened to the stairs? 
No, it's okay. Well, the stairs are out this week getting re-sanded and stained to match the same color as in here. That's going to look pretty cool for Easter. They'll be back this week. So that'll be really cool. But So we're, we're having to do things just a little differently today. What did you end up getting today? A palm leaf. Is, do I normally give you palm leaves when you come up for children's message? Not typically. Do you know why we have, why I gave you guys palm leaves and that everybody in the church will get one if they want when, we, when they leave? Any ideas on why? Henry, do you have any idea? No? Okay. <laughs> they are to celebrate what, when Jesus went into Jerusalem um, before he had the first Holy Week when he then died on the cross and was resurrected, okay? Sometimes we know that something is missing or wrong, but you can't figure out what's wrong. Oftentimes, I'll kind of walk into the church and be like, what in the world? There's something missing, or there's something in a different place. Do you think that, like, mice got it and ran it off with it? Do you think, no? Okay, well, good. Probably, Hannah, do you think that maybe the mice took it? Yeah, okay. Well, so I never know. Sometimes you never know. But most of the time, it's just someone else took it and put it in a different place, and I'll find it somewhere else, okay? Does that ever happen with brothers or sisters sometimes? Yeah. No. Well, not yet, Hannah. I have a feeling it will happen in a little while. Henry might find something that he likes in your room. Do you think that'll ever happen, Hannah? Yeah, probably, probably. Well, there are a few things that were off on the first Palm Sunday from what we were used to. Again, people were waving palm branches. That's not something we normally do around here, right? What do we do when we're excited about when we see somebody or, or like when Paul and Charlie got done with their, with their song? What did they do? What did we do for them? We clap. That's how we show our excitement. And that's, but this is how, what they would have done to welcome royalty into Jerusalem way back then. And secondly, do you remember what Jesus was riding when he came into Jerusalem? Do you think it was a really fancy car? No. Do you think it was a really strong horse or a camel? Camel? They, they, they rode camels back then. But do you think that's what he did? No. It was a donkey. It was a donkey that he rode in. But a donkey was a symbol of peace back then. So even when things are a little strange or different from what we're used to, there are often good reasons why they're like that. And by the end of this week, we will have our steps back and everything will look awesome for Easter. But sometimes we have to remember that even when we're missing something, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Sometimes even something better will take its place. And that's what certainly happened on the first Easter when Jesus was gone. But we will talk about that next week, okay? Thanks for coming up. Appreciate it. You guys can go up either with your families or with Miss Chris at this time, okay? And thanks for coming up, Henry. No, oh, you're going to have to go down that way. I, don't, I know you'd probably like to jump, Hannah, but no. Whoop, uh, Zoe, do you want your palm branch? There you go. You're welcome to have that. I'll get you the rest of these when, you're, when we're done, okay? Thanks. Okay. So our, our next thing for today is our last Lenten learning. So for the six um, Sundays in Lent, we have been learning about various things to do with the Lenten season and with Easter. And so today, I promised you we would be having a quiz on these to see how well you remember all of them, okay? So Shelly is going to be helping me on this. We are going to have a competition between the two sides, okay? So the middle aisle and over, you are my side, so you better do well. This middle aisle on over is Shelly's side. So what we are going to do is I am going to ask a question, and Maggie will put it up on the screen when I tell her. And the first ones that we see to raise their hand, don't shout out the answer, but raise your hand. The first one that we see, we will ask for the answer. If that side gets it right, they get a point. Shelly's the scorekeeper, and she has promised not to cheat. Um, <laughs> And, but if that side gets it wrong, the other side will have a chance to answer correctly, okay? So there are 10 questions. Here we go. 
First question, go ahead. How many days does the season of Lent last? Terry. 40. I would have taken 40 or 46 because it's technically 46, but the Sundays don't count. So my side, one point. There we go. Second question. What does the word Lent actually mean? What does the word Lent actually mean? Oh, yes. Oh, I saw Julie first. Ah, no. Sorry, good, good guess, but no. Anybody on this side know, remember what the word Lent actually means? Oh, okay, well, it means to lengthen. It simply means to lengthen because the days are longer. So, no, you get no points for that. So, and I am the official, I am the official, sorry. <laughs> Number three, what does the official color of Lent, which is perf purple, stand for? I, I, I'm going to go with Gary. Royalty is correct, yes. Royalty, preparation, or penitence. Any of those are acceptable, but royalty is the main one. Very good. Fourth question. What determines when Easter will be each year? Yes, Tom. The first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox. Very good. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> It, it, Easter is always the first Sunday following the first full moon after the vernal equinox. So I'm impressed, Tom. I am impressed. So well, you need more points. I will give you 1.2. 1.2 for that. So, okay, this is a two parter. When is the earliest and the latest that Easter can be? Okay, JD, yes. Ooh, close on both, wrong on both. <laughs> I'll, I'll give a correct answer for either of them. Anybody have want to guess on this side one of either the earliest or the latest? It's earlier than March 23rd and later than April 17th. No? Okay, anybody else know? Trent, I'll, I'll give you this if you get one of the two. Ooh, wrong on both again. You guys are, are trying. You're trying really well. But it is actually March 21st and April 25th. March 21st and April 25th. So good guesses. No points awarded on it. This is the hardest one. What do the letters INRI stand for? The ones that were on the piece of wood above Jesus' head on the cross. Oh, I, I saw Tom again. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Okay, Do you, for double points, what, what are the Latin words? <laughs> There's no J in the Latin alphabet. Very good, so I, Jesus. I, N is Nazareth, R is Latin Rex. Very King. good. And again, I, there's no J in the Latin alphabet. So, I, I, you Durham. I'm going to give both points to you guys, yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness, wow. Aesus Nazarenum Rex Iodorum, which means, which is Latin for Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Very impressive, very impressive. Okay, number seven. What are the two possibilities for what Peter heard right after he denied knowing Jesus a third time? I saw Janet too. Well, it could have been an actual rooster. Could have been an actual rooster crowing. Very good, yes. The Roman military guard sounded a trumpet at 3 a.m., which was also called the cock crow. So we don't know which one it was. It may have been an actual rooster, but they didn't allow typically those types of birds in Jerusalem at the time. So either one. One point, very good. What is the score now with... with... No, you guys are winning. There's no clapping at this point. So um, what is the score now, Shelley? Come on, guys. Come on. What is the color? What color is the official color of Easter and of Jesus? I, I did see Joanne on this one. White. Very good. And do, for a second point, what does it stand? Either. <laughs> no. Oh my goodness. Okay. What does it stand for, Ira? Isn't it like purity? 
Very good, okay, one point for this side then, yes, okay. One point for both sides. So this, this side has to get the remaining two, otherwise they win, so. Number nine. <laughs> no, I, do, I owe no one lunch, let me tell you. Number nine, what does the butterfly have to do with Easter? John, say it again. No, I'm sorry. Okay, Karen, we're going to go with Karen. What? Resurrection. Yes, the butterfly, okay, yes, I'm going to give it to you, yes, because it is a symbol of Christian faith. The caterpillar represents life, the cocoon represents death, and the butterfly then resurrection. So I'll give it to you. And then the last question, number 10, who introduced the rabbit as a symbol for Easter? What group? It was a pagan thing to begin with, but what group changed it? Cindy? It was the German Lutherans. Wow, you guys did very well. The rabbit has always been a symbol of fertility in ancient times for spring, but the German Lutherans gave the rabbit the job of a judge determining which children were good enough to receive candy or eggs for Easter. So, what was the final score? You have three. And three. has seven point two. Seven point two. Very good job, all of you. You win nothing except to your own applause. So, but I, I hope that you learned. I hope you learned a little bit more about Lent during this this time. So, thank you very much for participating. At this time, I am going to call Dan Whitlock up. He is going to give our mission moment for um, this month on the camp program. Welcome, Dan. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor Ryan and the uh, media team for preparing a little bit here. I did bring some notes, which I normally don't have, but I wanted to focus on some certain things. And before I do forget, uh, I left with Pastor some of our uh, brochures that we have that tells a little bit more on it. And the other thing I'd like to mention is that we have a website, and on that website tells a complete story of uh, most of it with camp. And it's if you go to our website, which is www campmissiontours.org. Right on the home page is a video that, that tells a lot of what we've done. It's professionally done by Southern Illinois University Edwardsville and they uh, sent a team with us one time and it's a very nice video that tells a lot. So I would like to introduce also my wife Jan. She's over here. Jan is uh, instrumental in the mission work that we do in Central America. And Jan uh, heads up our dental uh, team, which we'll talk a little bit more about. And Jan also starts uh, libraries. And she started a library in, in partnership with uh, a corporate or a partnership with uh, people called Give Dignity in La Carpio, Costa Rica, which is one of the most dangerous, toughest, roughest neighborhoods in Central America. Gangs. You name it, but here is here is a blossom in a little in a place like this that now it started with the adult or the children that Jan helped start with the library so they can come in and learn how to read. We now have adults coming to that class. Uh, camp has built a, a facility there that uh, we did do a lot of things. So I'll get into that too. I did bring my cheat sheets a little bit, and I'll try and stay with them because of, of time constraints. And afterwards, after I'm doing this, I'm going to go speak at another church. So I'll, I'll leave afterwards. But if you do have any questions later, feel free to contact me. It's nice to see. I know, I know quite a few of you as I, as I look around the thing and greeted someone coming in. And it's nice to see some faces. Jan and I just returned three weeks ago from Central America. We're hoping for a little warmer weather here because that's what we're used to there. And uh, it's been a thing. So camp is a 501c3 here in the United States which means that we're a nonprofit uh, corporation. We also had just attained one year ago in, in Central America. I didn't see you before. Good morning. <laughs> uh, we came in this morning and uh, greeted some, but camp is a 501c3 here. We just attained the um, legal status in Costa Rica. We're headquartered in San Jose, Costa Rica, because that's the safest country for us to keep all of our material, our dental, our medical, and things like that. 
We are very happy to become legal status in, so we have Camp USA and we have Camp Costa Rica. We have two separate boards. Camp is a Christian faith-based organization and we have uh, a, three officers, which I was just re-elected president. I've been president since 2005, which is too long, but, and I have uh, three officers. I have uh, seven board members, which are wonderful. I've been doing um, the work of camp for 28 years, and uh, the first year that we went, uh, I vowed that I would never return. It was such a horrible experience that I thought, I was up in the mountains, and I've been in the mountains for 10 years, over, over a 10 year period, uh, building a youth camp, which we completed many years ago. But I vowed that I would never go back. And the leader at that time said, Dan, the following year, I, I really need you. We want to do some bathrooms and things like that at the, at the camp. And I said, there's no way that I'm going back because I had such a horrible experience. So God tugged at the heart after a little bit and said, you know what, you need to go because we need you there. Went back, the rest is history. Camp became a nonprofit organization, as, you, as I said, and I've been president for, uh, for a while now. So some of the partnerships that Camp uh, does, we, I, I'm not gonna list them all, but we've, we've done uh, humani Habitat for Humanity, which Camp has won two international awards with Habitat. We are the only organization that comes in and we will build a complete house. We don't just do a, a portion of a house. We do a complete house. We've done it twice and camp has been awarded internationally for that. We're, and we're proud of that. La Carpio Give Dignity is where Jan is uh, involved in. It is, it is a squatter's village and it's, a, it's the garbage dump of San Jose, the capital. And so the Nicaraguans mainly have come in and squatted on this property and have made a community out of it. And that's, um, it's, just, it's just a bright spot of what can be done through God in, in places like that. I can name up a lot of places uh, that I can go on forever and, I, and due to time I won't name all of them because we, we partner. If we didn't have the partners, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. We have to have great partners uh, on the ground there at all times. I would like to talk a little bit more about La Carpio. In La Carpio, we're doing education in the facility that we built, which is uh, we do Bible study, English lessons, micro loans. Um, we do the medical, dental, and the. Um, I met a guy in there named Jesus one day, and if you ever want to know that story, I'll, I'll tell you about it. Also, we partner with a place called Casa Luz. It is a facility for mothers and babies, and we work there extensively doing a medical, dental, and construction, Casa Luz. The youngest mother is 11 years old, and the oldest mother is 17 years old. And so they've been abused by a family member, uh, usually a relative of some sort, and this facility houses them. We have basically three stages that we work with at this facility. And we take in the mothers. We have 26 moms right now, 25 moms and 26 babies. We have a set of twins. And so we have two stages. The first stage is two years where they have to live in a facility that we have. And we, it's well run, it's Christian Bath, and we have uh, counselors for them. And then once they're there two years, they can move over to stage two, which is a little more independent living so that they're, we know that they're not gonna run away and things like that. Stage three now is we work with child protection services, which is called Pani in, in Costa Rica. And the Pani, when the girls turn 18, they have to be put on the street. So they get pregnant again, they have more babies. And so what we've done is we've extended Casa Luz so that we have independent living for them and their babies to say they can stay at Casa Luz for this time period until they can actually uh, be educated and we, we work with that. Uh, Ninos con Carino is one of my favorite places and that is an orphanage for, uh, and a foster home for 40 little girls. Uh, I've worked there for 20 years maybe and we've built new bathrooms. Uh, we've, they used to be the bathrooms, the little girls were so little they couldn't get to the sinks, and when they get up on the sinks, they're made of concrete, and the girls would slip and hit their chins, 
And then, of course, we'd have to take care of the dental there. But we put in a beautiful ba uh, bathroom facility there. We built uh, a celebration center for them so they could have some sort of birthday parties and things like that. Ninos con Carino is one of my favorite places. And it's a loving, caring facility run by Catholic nuns from Colombia. And uh, we just feel at home there. In fact, uh, they felt so bad for me one time. Doc Shriver can relate to this. Uh, I had a, a painful shoulder, and they brought me in. And, and unbeknownst to me, they, they came in and, and said, we got a doctor for you here today. And we're going to give you a shot. And I said, I don't know if I want that shot. And I asked Jan, I said, what do you think? And she said, I don't know, but I was in a tremendous amount of pain. And so I went into the room, and the, the doctor gave me a shot. And it, you, you could hear my screams and my, my tears across the campus. And afterwards, he told us that he was a veterinarian. <laughs> And that he changed, uh, he goes, I, I take, and this is Spanish now, so we have to, and we have to, uh, he goes, I take care of all the cats and dogs here, and I'm a veterinarian, and I'm going, uh, and so this is right after the shot, unbeknownst to me, and Jan goes, hey, baby, how do you feel? And I said, meow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, you never know what you're going to get into. What does camp provide? Camp provides hope and love and we provide that through many means. And we've, we do it through uh, construction. Uh, we've taken, uh, I'm the lead plumber, and we have uh, all professional people that come, but then we have people that, uh, laymen, that want to come in and help. I notice your youth up here. Uh, I won't say that we'll change your life, but we would enhance your life. We have a lot of youth that go with us. We have families that go with us. We have the youth that go with us and uh, it's been a positive experience for them. And a lot of our young nurses that go don't know where they want to actually perform their life's work, and it kind of brings out forward to them of what they want to do and what areas of they want to do in. So construction is huge. We do the library, we've built churches, we've built medical centers, and uh, we do clean water, and we do sanitation. Camp also offers medical. We have medical teams throughout the year. Uh, we have universities that bring in their teaching students so that they have hands-on, and it's been quite popular and very successful. Our dental program, even though there's socialized medicine in Central America, especially Costa Rica, uh, and we serve a lot of Nicaraguans and El Salvador, but we, we headquarter in Costa Rica. The, the, um, the dental and the medical, they have socialized medicine, but if you wanted a, a filling, number one, you have to wait one, two years normally to get in. If you have cancer, it's, you're not going to get in unless you have the money to go to a private clinic. So where we come in, we serve a need there. And if we see a problem, we, try to, we have connections with a lot of hospitals now and local doctors. And so when we see a problem medically or dental, uh, we, we take care of that problem with them. Uh, we do... Shoes. Shoes are a tremendous impact on their society because, as you'll see later, there will be some photos of some shoes with the holes in them. We take in a lot of shoes, and we build everything in crates in my shop. We ship everything from my shop to Miami and Miami and to Limon, Costa Rica, and then delivered to our hotel. But shoes are such an impact. That's one of the number one requests we get is shoes. The, and if you see these children and walking around, if you look at that video online, you'll see a, how we do a shoe distribution. Backpacks, uh, you know, and if you uh, see backpacks, we fill them with dental supplies, school supplies. Jan's in charge of the school supplies. She gets the list of, together, and we can leave that with pastor sometime of what we do need for school supplies. Uh, they, a lot of people can't afford what they want to do. Uh, we take in Bibles, usually English-Spanish Bibles, for them to look at. So how can, why am I here, and, and what can you possibly do if you felt led to do? Shoes. Uh, we go to Walmart or Target. If you find the $2 shoes, that's fine. Usually like we, we like to take in new shoes for them, and that would be a blessing, and we can talk about how we could do that sometime. Backpacks, if you see an inexpensive backpack, and you want to buy it and donate to camp, we'll take that. Library books, Jan will have a list of library books, and we put it on, um, on our, 
I don't know, sure how we do it, we do a newsletter or something and you go in and you buy it, uh, Amazon maybe, and then you ship it to us and then we, we get it down there. And we can talk about school supplies or the thing, financial as always, because it takes money to put on a, a dental clinic, it takes money to put on a medical clinic, it, it, whatever we do, construction. Um, put together a team if you want to or an individual. I keep looking up the youth because you know what? It'll enhance your life. It really will. And any of you speak Spanish? Okay, we'll teach you. We'll, we've, we've got to, we'll teach you that too. So the shoes is, is really good. Blankets, of course. And camp is a, we're a mobile support organization. We support probably 30 or 40 organizations down there that uh, we're mobile. And I don't have the photo on, on this one, but if you see our buses, they're full, they're just full, packed full. And every day that we set up a dental clinic, then we have to take it down that night and we move to the next location and then the next location and the next location. We're always on the move. Uh, it's, a, it's a fast paced thing. If you ever want to join us, it's, it's fast paced. It's, a, it's a high energy and it's high impact and we absolutely love it. Uh, we love touching lives and uh, I'll do the slideshow here real quick. And um, so there's, our, there's some of our shoes at one of the giveaways. It's not a giveaway, it's a distribution. Uh, here's some of the shoes. I took a picture of what's, that's a normal shoe of what they go around wearing. Uh, this little guy just got his pair. This is a baby that, this is actually due to do with construction. This is a, a premature baby in La Carpio and is not allowed to come home to see their family or her mother. They're, they're gonna keep her and give her away to a foster home and because they didn't have the proper electrical in their house to support the, the system that this baby needed. Camp got the call, we went in, we, we, we did the electrical, we did some more work for it, and the baby was able to go to their baby. This is one of our nursing or uh, clinics that we're putting on here, nursing clinic. Uh, this is our, met, that's our dental staff. We have professional, that one's going that way, and uh, we have professionals all doing our dental. We have portable equipment that we pick up and go. We have very professional equipment. Uh, it's Doc Shriver approved. And then, is there any more on that one? Uh, that's Jan assisting. Jan used to be a dental assistant, turned kindergarten teacher, turned missionary. I take care of the whoever they need me to do during a thing. Um, keep going on that. Uh, that. Oh, meal program, we do meals too. We feed kids, uh, we have meal programs where we give food away, and we have things, this is our camp bags, construction, we do it in the rain or not. This is Nino's Concarino and the mural that I wanted to put in there to liven it up a little bit for the girls, and I think that's uh, probably it on that. Is that right? So thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. I know it was quick and everything, but I didn't want to take any more time from the pastor. I appreciate the pastor inviting me today. And if you have any questions at some time, uh, take a brochure, give me a call, and uh, we'll sit down and chat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dan, and uh, thank you for being here to share more about that. And if we do have questions, we will certainly get a hold of you. So have a great rest of the day. Shelley, if you would please give for us our first scripture reading for today. Okay, our first reading is from the book of Psalms, chapter 118, verses 1, and then 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank, I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O oh Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal, festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. 
You are my God. I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Thank you so much. And if you are able, please stand as we hear our gospel reading for today. Luke 19, verses 28 through 40. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then, when they brought, then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began praising God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had, that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. There's an old story on how one of the Pope's visits to America, his motorcade ran into traffic after leaving the airport. His limousine got separated from its security escorts, and in no time at all, the limo driver was hopelessly lost. The Pope told the driver to pull over. It had been years since he had driven a car, he said, and since they were lost anyway, what would it matter if he gave the wheel a spin? So the Pope and the driver changed places. They pulled onto the expressway, and it felt so good to be behind the wheel again that the Pope forgot all about the speedometer. A minute later, a police cruiser pulled them over. The officer swaggered up to the driver's side window, took one look at the Pope sitting in the front seat, sh grinning sheepishly, and said, I'll be right back, and walked back to his patrol car. That car up there belongs to someone really big, said the officer to his partner. Oh yeah, answered the partner, who is it? The mayor? No, bigger than that. The governor? No, bigger than that. You don't mean it's the President of the United States. No, this person's even bigger than that. Well, who could be bigger than the President? Well, I don't really know, said the other officer, but they have the Pope for their driver. <laughs> the way that we get around makes a difference. What you choose to drive makes a difference. This is what Jesus would have dealt with as he went into Jerusalem in the on that spring Sunday so many years ago. Remember that Jesus was a good, God-fearing Jew. He was circumcised when eight days old, given a good Hebrew name. He grew up learning the Torah, being taught by rabbis. So he would have known, along with most everyone in, in Judaism, that they were expecting the Messiah to come riding in on a white horse, ready to overthrow the Roman government by any means necessary and make Israel into the number one superpower in the ancient world. Did that happen? Not in the least. Not even the white horse part. Jesus came and went without running the Romans out of power, and Israel has never become a superpower. And for those who don't believe, Jesus was a very nice man who did a lot of good and died for his cause. Of course, Christians, no different. Jesus was the one that not only the Jews were waiting for, but the Savior of the entire world. But today, we would hardly put much stock in someone who came into town riding on a lowly donkey. By the first century AD, it was understood why Jesus came when he did. There were networks established around that world so that the word would spread. The Roman Empire had connected countries in a world way like none before. 
Yet there wasn't the glut of communication like there is today with too many competing voices for attention. There was still a true thirst for knowledge and faith was considered very important by pretty much everyone back then. There was even a universal language, Greek, that almost everyone knew as well as peace in the world overall. So God knew what he was doing by choosing that time period. It worked. We still believe 2,000 years later. But let's take a little look at the mode of transportation Jesus chose that day to make his grand entrance, the donkey. Today, we think of them only as beasts of burden. But back then, if a visiting king came into town riding a donkey, it conveyed that he came in peace, not to wreak havoc. The Roman standard of an emperor was to ride a war horse. That signified that he was in control. There was a desire to overthrow or at minimum keep things as, in, as is by use of force. But that's not what Jesus chose as he entered Jerusalem. He came into Jerusalem on a donkey showing that he was the prince of peace. So what we need to do today is prepare ourselves for how Jesus will come to us this Holy Week. As people of faith, we might be expecting a big spiritual awakening in the next few days. Isn't that what should happen during this important time of year? Shouldn't Jesus come running into our lives into, in a huge way this week, changing our souls for the better? And we need to be ready for that if it happens. But God can come to us in subtle ways as well. God doesn't need a flashy war horse. A donkey will suffice when it comes to our spiritual nature. So what, how do you think you would react if this week you're getting out of the, the car at one of our services and you see Jesus riding in on a donkey? Would you be prepared? And what would you do to show him that you are ready for what he expects or asks of you? Would we show him the beauty of our sanctuary, the various mission work that we do, the love we have for children and youth? Would we have Jesus sit down for a worship service, or would we take him out to eat? Would we ask him to preach or sit at his feet for a teaching? And as individuals, would we be proud to have Jesus sitting right next to us in the pew? Or would we be ashamed at what he saw in our life? Would he see sacrifice? Or would he see self-indulgence? I urge all of us to take time this Holy Week to invite Jesus into your everyday life and see where you can know him better, to better follow his ways. You may be doing a very good job already at your Christian walk, but we can always improve. And if you know you have specific things that you can work on, this is a great week to take the plunge. Attend the special worship services to gain a new perspective on this last week of Jesus' life. Make a commitment for even just these seven days to each day read a little bit out of the Bible. Spend some time on Good Friday really praying and thinking about Jesus' ultimate sacrifice for you. Make a conscious decision to make this week about your faith instead of just the plans for family, food, and egg hunts. Because you know that while all those things are good, that's not really what this week is about. It's about what God did for your eternal soul. So this week, let us be able to really understand what God has told us. We recognized his mode of transportation back then as being what was representative of what Jesus came to show us. The humble donkey as a symbol of peace. As we enter Holy Week this year, let us not worry about making a grandiose entrance, but work on our spirits as we travel with Jesus to the upper room, the trial, the cross, and ultimately to the joy of the empty tomb. It matters not how we travel to get here, but that we have Jesus as our companion as we complete this Lenten journey. Amen. And now I'll invite Fallon and Beth to come forward as they lead us in our next song, which is Lovely Noise. If this isn't a Palm Sunday song, I don't know what is. And in the spirit of such, stand as you would if you want to. Thank you.
and sing loud. <laughs> share our joys and concerns and to be very honest I don't have many this week um they weren't many given so I'm assuming that this is a good thing that there aren't people in the hospital or having lots of difficulties we continue to pray for Tom Sneed's sister-in-law's brother Larry um, he can have surgery on his pancreatic cancer which is a wonderful thing better news than they thought because they thought nothing could be done so we lift up Josh Bush's sister, Sasha. Her baby is due pretty much any time now, so we lift up um, Sasha and the family. And we pray for all those who are traveling. We know some have gotten back this last week, and we're glad that, that you're back up here. But we also know others will be traveling on spring break this week, as well as for the Easter holidays. So may you have safe travels wherever you go. And of course, we lift up all those in the Ukraine, those who are dealing with cancer, and those who are suffering in other ways as well. If you'll please bow your heads with me then for our pastoral prayer, then we'll say our Lord's Prayer together. Most loving God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to enter into Jerusalem this week with you. We know that it, it was a wonderful day back on the first Palm Sunday with palm branches waving and shouts of joy being lifted, but that all changed very quickly. So Lord, as we go through this next week, allow us to be able to understand what you did for us. May we be able to pay attention by going to services, by praying, by reading your holy word, and knowing then what you have truly given for us before we hit the joy of next Sunday as well. Lord, please be with all those situations that we've lifted up today. May they be touched by your love and your blessings. And may those that remain in our hearts as well know your love as well. It is in Christ's name that we pray all this, along with the prayer that Jesus taught all of his disciples to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we say thank you, of course, for all those that give their money to the church, for the blessings that it provides, and for the ministry that it provides for people in our community and around the world. For those of you who are here in the sanctuary, you're welcome to give in the plates outside the, the exits to the sanctuary. And for those at home, you're welcome to send it in, mail it in, put it in the white box that's locked outside the main doors, or send it in through PayPal. If you would please bow your heads with me for the offering prayer, and then we'll have our doxology. Most loving God, we are grateful that you provide for us so many blessings in this life. Allow us to never take them for granted and to be able to share with others what you have blessed us with. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we will join um, Charlie and Paul in singing our closing hymn, number 280, the first, third, and fourth verses of All Glory, Laud, and Honor. say thank you to all those who helped today, Jeannie and Julie on the PowerPoint, Bruce on sound, Josh on the live stream, Maggie did the PowerPoint, Shelly was the liturgist, um, and then Charlie and Paul and Fallon and Beth on the music. It is all greatly appreciated. So if you'll please join with me in the unison benediction and Irish blessing. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind blow softly at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall softly on your fields. 
And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hands. Go in the peace, love, and joy of our Lord. Amen. And we will have palms out there for anyone who'd like to have them. Thank you.